welcome to today's session on uh, panel discussion on uh, the relevance of social security in new age india and also the book release of uh, handbook on social security by sc ramchandra garu and uh, welcome you all once again for this panel discussion and uh, before i invite the dignitaries onto the stage i request our president sri anil agarwal garu and uh, sri ravi kumar garu chair hr and ir committee to please come onto the stage to welcome the chair and the panel members sir and now i invite uh, the moderator of the panel discussion today we have mr sri nandakumar garu partner first principal uh, to please come onto the stage and take your seat sir nandakumar garu is a human capital strategist with a considerable background in employee relations he has worked in organizations of varying sizes across multiple industries including mining agri products fmcg and pulp and paper he has around 40 years of expertise in the areas of core employee relations function experience in dealing with enforcement agencies like the factories inspectorate labor department other government departments and he is currently partner at the first principal previous to this he was heading the hr function in itc limited tspd division welcome sir i request our president to please uh, present a plan as a welcome gesture Now I invite uh, Mr. Vadali Panikar, Head HR, India Operations, Signal India Limited, to please come on to the stage, sir. Sri V V S S Panikar is presently working as Head HR Operations, Signal India Limited. He completed his graduation in M S R M, Gitam, Bihar, Kerala. He has 22 years experience in manufacturing sector. He worked in Coromandel International, Asian Paints, G S K, Vipro, Usha in different positions. Now I invite Mr. Ram Sundar Madhila, CHRO and Chief Strategy and the Product Officer, Aspen Tech Private Limited and Pran Tech Private Limited, to please come onto the stage, sir. Mr. Ram Sundar Madhila is a highly acclaimed global CHRO and Strategic HR Business Leader with proven achievements in Strategic HR and IR, Strategic Workforce Planning, Digital Business and HR Transformation, Talent Acquisition and Retention, and other core HR activities. Welcome, sir, and thank you. Now I invite uh, Miss Janani Prakash, Head HR at Quantella Incorporation, to please come on to the dais. Miss Janani is a global head of human resources for Quantella INC, a technology pioneer that offers outcome business models through the digitization of urban infrastructure. She assumed this role in September 2021. And uh, not only uh, HR professional, she is also a certified yoga instructor, trained classical music vocalist, veena player, and a teacher. Ma'am, very versatile. Welcome to this session. Thank you, uh, Arjun Agarwal sir and Ravi Kumar Garu for uh, honoring the guests. And now I hand over the dais to Sri Nand Kumar Garu to carry out the panel discussion. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here today because one of my old friends, Mr. Ram Chandra, has authored a book. Uh, for me, anybody who is capable of authoring anything close to a book is somebody who is to be admired. I always wondered how people. One is that you know so much to write a book, and you have the capacity to write a book, and you actually do it. so these are some things which always uh, what do you call amazed me as something that has always been a dream i don't think i'll be able to do it but it's something to be admired uh today's topic is about is social security relevant in the current age or not let me just set the context before i request the other panelists to join the discussion there was a time way back in the initial stages of industrialization uh when an employee met with an accident in one of the factories in the european countries particularly uk 
there was a demand from the union saying that the employee has to be compensated for the injury and at that time in uk there was no law which mandated any compensation to an injured employee so therefore there was a discussion in the british parliament and the majority of the parliamentarians have expressed an opinion that the employee has joined the has accepted the job fully aware of the risks that are involved in the job therefore that he is not entitled to the to compensation he knew what the risks were he accepted the risk therefore thank you very much that's what they said in fact they said that only those people who have not joined the company and who don't know the risks if they are injured they are to be compensated that is where the discussion ended and for quite some time there was no compensation being paid at that time we in india uh, uh, i know initially companies like tatas and others who were very what shall we say benevolent or uh, uh, large hearted had schemes like gratuity schemes and others which later on the government of india copied and made the uh, gratuity act of course at that time gratuity was paid at, uh, after 15 years or 20 years in different companies that being the context now from 1947 when we became independent to date there is a substantial and a very significant change in the way Uh, uh, economy is operating. Uh, we have got new industries, particularly in the service uh, sector and other things. So, therefore, we thought we have a discussion on whether to see whether social security continues to be relevant or not. That's the context of the discussion. I wanted to set it before we started. So, my first question would be to the panelists. Uh, I would request Mr. Ramchandra Madhala to uh, react on that. Is social security required? what i uh, the question what i mean by that is when an employee joins an organization there is a contract of employment between the employer and the employee i pay what i have agreed to pay now whether he saves that money or whether he uh, plans for his retirement should be his look out why should i as an employer be responsible employees are all adults who know where whom to vote which party to vote which prime minister to elect they are fully aware of all these things so should their future their savings should be my responsibility therefore should social security be there at all is it should it be there or not is the question thank you nand kumar gar uh, dagas kagring of the uh, senior like selan murthy gar ramchandra rao gar niranjan and somina ashok kumar ashok kumar reddy and my dear friends good evening everybody and uh, yes if you see 20 30 years back when nature profession started the paying pf paying esi itself is a very difficult for the company they used to try means and ways to escape from those menaces but today uh, when the world is growing when the economy is also growing the people started thinking about the sustainable development goals sustainable development goals actually gives a lot of social security systems to the any society especially if you see europe and other places there is a benefit while you are in work even if you take even if you don't pay but there is something money insurance money also you pay for state you pay pay for country that will go into the this one and social security is a inevitable and compulsory to anybody in fact because we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow tomorrow especially in the gig economy the people wanted to work on their own but uh, when the person is not working also he should be have some security to the life it may be insurance it may be the uh, maternity it may be the xyz there are multiple benefits unemployment benefit also in india unfortunately we don't have these kind of uh, thought process some time back but if you see over a period people also moved and to, today a lot of benefits are coming and people also now having insurance only the big thing but when as whereas if you see countries like us and europe there's education also comes at very free of cost or low cost a lot of things will come at the cost that is actually nothing but social security you may be paying high tax but you are secured same it should be replicated in india but we are going there but it takes some time but social security is a must as per my experience 
any employee joins we should uh, as sir said uh, we should give fixed pay and charge pay also but if the person is having security the he is going to work more productive more engaged and more result oriented that what makes the difference thank you okay uh good evening everyone such a pleasure to be here and i am meeting a lot of seniors here so namaste to everyone um my response to this is uh, i come from the it industry so the way i'm seeing everything is skills half life used to be like 15 years and it's shrunk to 5 years now and then i'll give you a classic example of uh, the number of jobs that got posted in the us sometime in uh, uh, 2018 was about 7.5 million and of the of these right the the varieties were around it hr finance and all these varieties of skills now the average number of skills that were required was about 18 what happened was the same set of jobs were posted again in 2021 this time the average number of skills that were required was 21 you might think the differential is just about 3 what's the big deal right no the 18 skills that were there earlier 50% of them were not applicable at all in 2021 which means for doing the same job in 2021 versus 2018 there is a differential of 12 skills so that's the pressure that people are going through each one in this room are thinking about what's going to be my tomorrow isn't it now imagine if i'm going to be an employee i'm going to constantly think about what's going to be my relevance tomorrow and this fear is more than ever before right now and this is directly proportional to the need for social security that any country has to provide to get india alone so i think if employers are focusing today on well being as a concept and they want productivity which is again on heightened focus we are seeing so many reports right now that people are um, being asked to produce more um, automate more do more so they are able to achieve more in less time or do more with less resources so there is just pressure from all directions and this will become an added pressure if there is no social security that itself just sets the business case very clearly that organizations if they want maximum then they will need to pro- give social security um, that's my response sir thank you uh, janani uh, good evening all uh, good evening uh, the dignitaries who are on the stage and to all the senior hr fraternity who are off the stage uh, sitting in front of me a very good evening uh, so i to second with uh, ramchandar and uh, janani uh, on the need of social security uh, but i would like to give a different perspective uh, to this so the term social security so it was there since long time after years long back if you go back to the roots like pre independence era we there was a term called social security actually the origination was from pre independence so we heard about fatal accidents act then workman compensation act which was enacted in 1923 so basically these acts were enacted for working class who were working in the manufacturing uh, sector and at that time the safety uh, features or the safety uh, importance of safety was not so high so people used to meet with accidents there used to be fatal accidents there used to be injuries so so that necessitated this acts to come into play so so then these acts actually got formalized uh, when the constitution was laid out so constitution was laid out in the year 1950 so even employee state insurance act was enacted in the year 1948 which covers uh, a benefit for the employees or for the workforce in case of any accident disability death uh, maternity uh, par- partial disability permanent disability so all those thought processes were there earlier also during our earlier years also and which got inculcated or imbibed in the constitution because the constitution the prominence of social security gained in the constitution so you all might be knowing 
that everyone is equal in the constitution okay and uh, it's a fundamental right for the people for the citizens of india right to life right to live peacefully right to live healthy and also there is a mandate in the directive principles for the state that the state has to secure the social order and welfare of the people and also in one of the concurrent list social security and insurance plays a very important role so it means that both central and state are duty bound to provide social security to the citizens of india so the genesis of social security formally came from the constitution and if we further come down it narrows down to organization so where people work where people work safely in case of any accidents so see basically the social security is not only to take care of accidents it's like a providing a so financial dignity to the people when whenever there is a crisis suppose if an employee is not having employment or an able person has become disabled due to accident if he has retired he or she has retired so they should be having a respectable financial dignity when they are not in employment so the social security provides that suppose <coughs> nand kumar sir said that uh, we employ people so there is an agreement that we pay you for the desired results which you will be giving to the organization so there ends the matter so my take would be like there will be lot of employees and we pay salaries to them few employees have saving potential depending upon their needs depending upon their wants they save few employees might not i have seen practically people after retiring joining uh, some shopping malls as security guards because they were not having uh, saving potential but the variability in the thought process has to be neutralized by the social security so as the state and central are duty bound to provide social security to the employees similarly the organizations are also duty bound and uh, you you all know that the government has created lot of platforms wherein the social security will be taken care irrespective of the age religion or whatever male female whatever it might be so we have workman compensation act we have esi act we have gratuity act uh yes we have gratuity act uh we have uh, what we say provident fund act employee pension scheme we have so there are many like nps we have we have nps we have voluntary provident fund these are all platforms and it's on the employees to choose and also it's the responsibility of the organization and also the state and central to create more and more awareness so that people are more aware they choose these uh, platforms and then they facilitate their own uh, financial well being so for me social welfare security uh, social security was prominent earlier is prominent now and in future also it will play a very very important role thank you so that's my take thank you i have a slightly different question to ask if social security is so important why is it only limited to 15000 for pf and 21000 to esi it should be relevant even if i have 4 lakhs as my basic wage no so yes sir your question is very uh, valid and relevant so basically the social security act for an act for working class uh, basically people who join an organization and they work there they toil there and they retire from there so that was the basic uh, objective of uh, enacting these legislations but coming to your question there are certain legislations like uh, workman compensation act erstwhile now it is called as employee compensation act for that there is a wage ceiling but everyone is eligible for it irrespective of the wage ceiling we have to calculate on the wage ceiling we have gratuity act which is not having any ceiling everyone is eligible but in id act there is a definition of a worker which does not cover managerial and super uh, supervisory staff because they are they might be capable of managing their own finances because they are highly paid 
they get employment elsewhere they can move from one job to another job so that's uh, that's uh, my take sir yeah uh, sir this limitations was actually came uh, over a period and the government enacting to the next level takes some time that's where i feel that uh, the government is also thinking and the companies also thinking and where some structures are there uh, people are also for example in my case when i am working with the reliance industries i have a super innovation fund so super innovation fund actually given the part of your ctc and the retail it goes and uh, when you retire or when you come out some taxable non taxable um, amount you can take so uh, which we can include but uh, the see all government acts actually having some limitations but any organization should think beyond the acts should think more will be not only just while working when the person goes out maybe with unemployment or maybe the going is going to retire and uh, faces lot of difficulty kind of accident or family members dies so all these scenarios one has to oh, see and provide that and uh, i think uh, maybe in a couple of years changes will come and even new code the new labor code is actually bringing even one year you work even five months you work that will come that will apply and you are a fixed term employment also if you are having ftc also you have gratuity so a lot of changes is going to come i think it's a, a welcoming gesture but at the same time we need to protect the people not only just organized working class i said and organized also we should think that's a very big issue in india so for example if you say 10 crore people are 20 crore people are not working what about others what what are actually uh, unorganized sectors also whereas in uh, us why we we always think about going to us to europe just because of social security nothing more than that you need to think in those lines and we should also have sustainable development goals where the ilo talks about uh, fair li- living wages fair wages all those things this was given and uh, that is a big thought process behind there when we are actually enabling our new acts these are the few things that we need to take account and uh, take it ahead that's what my thought was so i just want to add to the already given points that other panelists um number one i think it's very important for us to think about sustainability of anything like ramachandra was mentioning um let's say all of us are hr professionals we are in companies and we think of uh, creating let's say service anniversary awards if it's a startup company uh, just having a years experience we start thinking okay chalo let's do it because people will feel good about it and then we say 5000 10000 now 5 years 6 years later the one year service awards become a burden for the organization isn't it so then we start suddenly thinking and then we we'll, we'll say okay third year award we will do five year award we will do and then there are organizations that hit 25 years and they say 10 years thank you no reward we will give you a plaque earlier they were doing 20 grams of gold right i think all of us have seen some of these things now that's not the point let's think about the population that our country has and uh, the sustainability of paying something like this even as interest by our government right again i want to take another point that uh, mr ramachandra was talking about um, the unorganized sector has the maximum number of people working today if the new wage code and the social security code gets implemented i think there is a beautiful mechanism that the government is thinking about to say okay i'm going to create a framework everybody can register once you register you get a card with which you will be able to apply for your social security and uh, therefore your your life is going to be much more secure financially when you are unemployed or you are unable to um, be employed for whatever reason health reasons whatever that is right think about this if you have uh, a flower vendor that's giving flowers to your home or a vegetable vendor that's giving flowers to your, that's giving vegetables to your home um and she goes on a maternity leave for 6 months can she even afford to go on a maternity leave today right that's totally not possible but this in case this gets implemented then i think those possibilities will start existing now um the question is why is 21000 why is 15000 so let me bring it back there 
I think the money value is very different for different people. Um, also, let's think about it from an employee standpoint. I remember the days when I just started my career. Uh, the employer contribution and the employee contribution used to be showed in the CTC, but employer contribution used to be outside the total money, right? Like whatever is my CTC. Today, employer contribution 12% is shown or you choose the minimum, then that is shown. Now, both of it is going from the employee's salary. So, think about it. If I am going to start earning 40 lakhs, then it is burdensome for me also as an employee, right? So, I think actually speaking, sir, with all due respect, this 21,000 is a very good flexibility because there is an opportunity for the employees to choose all the way up till 12%. There is an opportunity for voluntary provident fund. There is an opportunity for NPS, which is there under ATCCD. Um, for employees side to give up to like to pay up to 50,000 and then there is uh, employer NPS opportunity as well which I think it's fast catching up by many organizations and it gives immense opportunity to just save up to 7.5 lakhs per year both from a tax benefit perspective as well as for retirees. So um, therefore I think this is okay for now because it is just encompassing all the varieties of uh, um, income categories that we have today in India. Maybe we will have to see what is future going to hold. The next question that I have is that if social security is so important and you all believe that employees would be committed to the organization, then why do we have moonlighting? That's how, in fact, moonlighting came to light only because you had that guy had two PF accounts and that's where it is. If that's the, if that is so, if that is the binding force. Maybe I will respond to this first. So the issue came to light only because I believe uh, they picked up that somebody has two accounts, I don't know, three, two or three or four, whatever number. So therefore, the point I am trying to make is social security given by an employer is not going to be a binding force for the employee, point number one. The other is that the enforcing through a statute is making it so, what shall we say, expensive that even a government is not willing to go back to the old pension scheme. 1984, all parties, including the communists, have sat down and said, we cannot afford to have this pension scheme, it has to be modified. And that's how the new pension scheme for the government employees has come into play. Now, of course, for political reasons, parties are saying, we'll go back. But the fact of the matter is that the country cannot afford this pension scheme was the conclusion at that point of time. I would like the software lady to respond to the moonlighting thing. I think uh, initially my response to why social security is needed itself was about skills, half-life and all that, right? It's fundamentally again boiling down to what are the emotions people are going through in the past two years at least. I think psychologically, okay, like I always do and I think this just works well. Let's say I'm having a headache. I go to the doctor. The doctor says, take Crozen. I take it. Two days later, it repeats. Now, after two, three times, I go to the doctor again and then the doctor figures out that there is some acidity issue that's in my tummy and therefore, this is an expression that's coming out as a headache. So, the issue that needs to be solved is the tummy and not the head. Moonlighting or career cushioning whatever there are so many other new terms that are coming in right so let me not bring everything but all of these are expressions of deep fears that people are having with respect to how can i stay relevant with respect in the future how can i be financially independent can i be able to take care of my family even if i'm not having the same earning potential as that of today will my job be relevant five years later five years what are we talking about 18 months later <laughs> Like chat GPT is coming and just conquering the world. We don't know which jobs will exist. We were thinking developers are the most secure job, but developers are under threat now because the basic codes are already written by chat GPT. You can take that and then do testing. Suddenly testers have become 
um, more hot than developers or they are going to become more hot than developers right so um, so that's i think moonlighting is all an expression so what can we do about it is something i can spend time on if you if you like me to um what can we do about it let's let's just think about this right there are two three aspects one is i want to be skilled um i want to use my skill in different things then um, i want to earn more money clearly third i want to be relevant for future these are the motivators like the stomach pain that i mentioned so the stomach pain is due to these things and the stomach pain needs to be solved right now so these are the issues that we need to focus on and not on the surface level issue which is just a headache or the moonlighting right now so how can organizations think about um, presenting opportunities for upskilling work and learn on the go do projects on the go can we think radically to say i'm going to have forced um, projects for 20% of the time for every employee and then i'm going to put a system within the um within the organization to say okay i'm a, mm, let's say i'm a java developer and i talk in my language maybe others i will look to others to talk about the manufacturing examples but or like production let's say i'm in production but i want to go to process engineering or i want to go to scale up and whatever right like technology transfer these are the varieties of um departments that may be available in manufacturing but can i have 20% of my time just allocated to that and in hr parlance if i have to say we have been in deep specialization in the last few years now suddenly one uh, area of work that has been my specialization just dies or is taken over by some technology then i am becoming totally irrelevant right so what can we do we, we should think about t shaped careers where one area is very deep and organizations should start thinking about providing those opportunities and monetizing as well to say okay janani is doing 20% job on lnd while her core core work is recruitment now two things are happening janani is upskilling there is some lnd work that's getting delivered then there is some monetizing that's happening so the fear that is fundamentally there which is also the reason why we have social security today and there are other reasons about securing future i think all of that is alleviated so that's my response if organizations are able to start thinking about these things i think moonlighting and all will slowly come down or put a structured process for moonlighting as well to exist within organizations uh, moonlighting is a issue of talent and uh, skill problem and also opportunity i feel that people who are doing moonlighting with the same projects uh, different companies just unethical and you need to bound to have uh, you have signed employment contract that's where the wrong but if you are actually for example you are a full stack developer in data science but weekends you are doing uh, real estate there is nothing wrong in that that's not called moonlighting that's a ethical right because but this is a why i am calling it as a skill and talent problem is if the somebody is underpaid for his talent definitely he will think about moonlighting you need to understand the real talent that most of the times we pay for the our pedigrees and as well as institutions we should stop that this unconscious bias which is happening i am coming from iit i am coming from i am i am coming from x y it's not the issue issue is end of the day how you are delivering and for example now you can take chandrashekharan who is mca now heads the tata group he has done extremely good work so the talent is there everywhere you need to identify and monetize it rightly and so that he can dedicate and become loyal and do that it's a hr problem most of the times it's not the problem of the employees i am telling you it's a most of the times hr problem we need to understand the aspirations we should understand the careers as a t shaped careers we need to build in cross uh, vertical you need to even horizontal careers we need to create make the people especially if you see startups i worked uh, people are ready to take multiple roles and they have gone leaps and bounces and they became product owners they were actually the what uh, you know um, uh, the people were earning maybe their fathers were earning they got in 4 5 years so because they have actually got so much of skill and talent they are not only just programmers they are the sales they are the customer success partners they are this one we need to understand for each skill you have to pay 
I will only pay for the technology. I will not pay his management skills. Definitely, the people will go for moonlighting. So uh, it's a HR problem. We need to handle it very delicately. We need to sit with the employee, aspiration, understand their both managerial and technical qualities and business aspirations also, and retain them. And best thing is, you need to uh, make them give the impossible or challenging projects to the moonlighting people. They will come out with the you know. um very good results and uh, you encourage entrepreneurship also not the entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurship another way entrepreneurship they will make your organization go to the new heights that's a one of the key solutions so that we can think about that's what my response sir i have one last question for the panelists uh we hr people find it very convenient to say that yes social security should be there and and uh the one thing that keeps bothering me is that we are also party to creating models like swiggy and zomato ola uh, what is the other one uber where the employer wants people to work for him but he doesn't want them to be treated as employees he is saying particularly in uber he says they are independent entrepreneurs they have a car they have registered with me they use my platform therefore they pay me something and they earn their this thing and then for my service they pay me something so we are also party to creating a, a business structures where employees are treated as pariahs we don't want them to be on our rolls they should not be called employees because it's all very expensive for us one of the drivers in uk has gone to the supreme court there seven supreme court judges have said that uber drivers are employees of uber thank you very much you please regularize all of them you can keep telling stories about entrepreneurship and all that today in india i don't think they get minimum wages i don't think they have any i think recently there is some insurance introduced for swiggy and others for any accident otherwise that entire those thousands of people who work for swiggy zomato all these amazon whoever it is they are the only people who are in touch with the customer let me tell you that i have worked with uh, uh, jabong.com and companies like that i asked the managers how many times have you met your customer they say we never go and meet our customer it is the service boy the delivery boy who meets the customer so he is the only ambassador to that company okay and they don't want to be on their roles they are not my employees so what about them is social security not required for them what is the so if social security is implemented those companies will go bust the whole model is created on that now what do we do there the question is for all three of you whichever sequence you want to answer i was working with an e-commerce company called foodmingo sometime where uh, zomato was uh, planning to acquire our company see this operation of workforce is happening for quite some time this operation workforce is nothing but as uh, nanda kumar sir told that um, you are independent entrepreneur but there also social security system is very very important when we got couple of contracts in fact initial my career in that uh, e-commerce company we were having uh, employees directly on roles but when we started giving third party logistics yes as you said we started but we wanted to take deep Uh, understanding of the employee aspirations also we have actually made uh, our third party logistic company to whether are you going to implement pf are you going to esi everything we have taken see i have managed more than in my last 15 years manufacturing firms also most of the contract companies they don't care where we need to have a lot of you know hr should have guts to speak to them and make them to become uh, compliant to the, to the things i was also working with uh, hyderabad metro uh, before i joining 40 crores of rupees was lying with the lnt after joining within 2 months i could uh, clean the entire this one these are not with the problem these are with the problem of hr and business leaders these are these we need to have a mindset to uh, comply this and uh, create social security to the employee whether you are uber or entrepreneur even entrepreneur required that you know entrepreneur even the for example initially they were attracting the people with more bonus today that bonus were not there if you ask any uber and ola driver you ask them 
initially how they are and today they are the all together different but that's how it happens any product when mukesh ambani comes with the reliance infocom or maybe reliance jio he offers freely but later on he takes your you know money there there is a there is a business model we need to accept but at the same time there is a good thing and bad thing also before reliance ambani comes i tell metal was taken a lot of money from us that we need to understand today is giving service is delivering it but at the same time social security we should not compromise at any cost whether he is a direct employee or is outsourced one we need to comply the process and establish standards of social security system and eliminate the wrong things and put the right things most of the plants i work there contract laborers are biggest problem and i when i worked in a ck birla group orient cement there is a huge problem when i went there plant expansion gram sabhas when happened within one year i settled and everything and i made the great place to work this happens when only only you are having alignment with the business leaders plant heads and also you are having excellent team you can work in and also unions and everybody plays vital role the political leaders you need to have that uh, uh, social acumen not only just business acumen social acumen you need to demonstrate how you can speak how can you convince example i have a 2 lakhs only insurance to the employee i think is 5 lakhs next day onwards they started speaking very respectfully before that they used to come and uh, used to dadagiri in my room that's how it happens so respect the employees respect understand their aspirations and give small things and that year they are the 36 years highest production i got i'm saying this happens when you think about very positive about your employees because they are the people are the real assets of the organization that is a fundamental thing if you are able to think even they are outsourced are insourced they are the real assets of the people yeah sure um i want to bring a very different spin to this whole thing i was just thinking about how corporate social responsibility became big in india or in the industry right or how did diversity equity inclusion as a topic start becoming big there are two three things one these just start they start penetrating into the industry from somewhere due to some importance and then slowly they take larger shapes when when it starts getting into the ceo matrix when the fund funding companies start saying you will be funded only if you are doing this banks start saying you you should have metrics around all of this and then i'm going to finance you now dei like the diversity metrics people are also starting to ask for uh, transparency and last few years we have seen that also happen now ESG as a topic. Now I'm bringing ESG because ESG is the most recent, most bubbling. I think all of you here could be able to relate to this topic. ESG was just spoken about, good to have two years back, but now suddenly it's taking a gigantic proportion. Why? Because of all of these reasons, banks will start saying, "I'm not going to give you any fund, or I'm not going to release finances if you're not going to have all of these criteria met." So organizations are trying to find a way to do. things and um, have them added to the metrics for some time they can they can try and just do something but then after a while there have to be real metrics and uh, impact right now the gig workers swiggy zomato which were company i think they are totally not an exception to this logic if i am applying to it fund funding companies finance companies or uh, banks or governments um or let's say as a country us our government starts saying you do not have permission to work here or employ here if you are not um if you are not going to pay for the social security of our employees or or of the people that are going to be working with you in any form they can be part timers freelancers gig workers any anybody you call them anything but they are working for your company right i, I think that will be a very bold stance is this not going to come i think it's it's going to come at a very foreseeable future because already i was men- mentioning about um, organized uh, you know unorganized uh, sector and so many people working there and how government of india is trying to bring in a central portal where everyone can go and self register that i am i am an entrepreneur 
to nanda sir's uh, reference right entrepreneurs working in company x they can call themselves anything but then they can go and register and then they have mechanisms from a, in every state to go and raise a complaint if it's not done there are there are grievance redressal mechanisms all through have been very well thought through so um i think it's just matter of one or two years or maybe faster that we will see solutions for this that's my take sure uh, ஆன்சர் பட் Uh, my thought is uh, it's just a beginning so everything generally evolves over a period of time so with respect to the gig workers if we see the four new labor codes in one of the code code of social security so the gig workers definition is given and also uh, towards social security they will be covered under esi so it's just a beginning but moving forward because every act is evolved every enactment is evolved over a period of time it's not a overnight uh, kind of a uh, creation so definitely this will also take some time because uh, it's like in between uh, it's like between uh, management or companies or organization versus the government so basically that when government comes forward then organization will say that we don't have earning capacity or paying capacity so it's like it's like it always there will be a conflict between government and the management see for example in telangana the minimum wages so the minimum wages have not changed since long time only once in 3 months or once in 6 months uh, the bda changes the basic wage has not changed when we ask the government why you are not changing they will say that organizations are not accepting because we should have earning uh, paying capacity so it's like this game will continue forever but definitely my take is it will get evolved over a period of time definitely gig workers will also get covered under social security as ramchandar said that they are also working they are also working for some organization definitely the organizations will be duty bound to take care of their welfare social security and financial dignity so thank you no oh, just a minute sir uh, esg uh, new companies act actually mandating after our uh, prime minister accepted the climate change pact and other so sustainable development goals it's going to be now for hr is a big opportunity because environment social and governance is going to come to the hr hands and uh, new com- companies act actually mandating by 2025 we are going to start implementing by 2030 it's a mandate so that's where a uh, lot of uh, taking care of environment uh, is very important social that is there in the act itself esg this one that is going to be the very critical that's where the uh, out of the nine uh, you know compliances six compliances come to the hr and six uh, uh, actually they need to and hr got the bigger role to play they are going getting into the board rooms first time they are going to make mandate it are also need to be boardroom previously it's only it's optional whether if you are a public sector director hr then only you are on the board but uh, with this act they are getting in the boardrooms that's a big ch- uh, chance is going to be there and but that's going to give a lot of uh, responsibility also hr to comply both governance and as well as social aspects that's a big change we need to understand and we need to learn and adapt thank you thank you very much i tried my best to make the panelists say that social security is not relevant but i failed the the, the consensus seems to be that it is absolutely relevant and i congratulate mr ramchandra for having written a book which is so relevant and topical thank you very much thank you sir uh, thank you the chair of the panel discussion and all the panel members for this excellent discussion 
and now i invite our president uh, sri anit agarwal sir to present a memento to the panel chair uh, nand kumar garu also invite our senior vice president sri meena jaydev garu to please present a memento to the panel member request our senior vice president to present memento to mr anikal and i invite our uh, vice president mr suresh kumar singhal to please present a memento to mr ram chandra matela And I invite our chairman, Mr. Ravi Kumar, head chair of the Yar Committee, to please present a memento to Ms. Janani. Thank you. And take a group uh, group photo, sir. Sir, Ram Chandra Garu, and uh, also the Dilkar Sir Garu, Girijan Garu, please come on to the stage. नमस्कार प्लीज से नमस्कार नॉट गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग बट भारत में ये चलेगा कि से नमस्कार आई एम 92 टू ईयर्स यंग ए मैन इज एज यंग एज ई थिंक्स देर फॉर थिंक दैट यू आर यंग एंड यू विल हैव प्लेंटी ऑफ एनर्जी फ्रेंड्स this issue of social security i want to raise to a little higher level we are all in the companies you know there is what is called a csr corporate social responsibility it is not only to the employees those who are already having work and have means to live that security is required security is required for every citizen of this country for every citizen of this country First, let me see. In part four of our constitution, that talks of the directive principles. All governments are obligated to take care of the citizens, to take care of the citizens, not only those who are employed, but who don't have even any work. who don't have any shelter all of them have to be taken care of according to the constitution if you read this one it is called dr ambedkar constitution it is not ambedkar constitution but part 4 is really ambedkar constitution if i read some of them it will be astounding what are the responsibilities 
Please bear with me. Every citizen, every every citizen, have has the right to an adequate means of livelihood. Every citizen, fourteen hundred million citizens are there, three hundred eighty million families are there. Every citizen is entitled, has got the right to adequate, not means of living, adequate means of livelihood. that the dignity of life every person has to have a dignity of life there is equal pay for equal work some of the more i am reading the children of given apart opportunities all children are to be given opportunities and facilities to full manhood nutritious food is to be given to all not only life but life with the dignity like this 16 rights every person must be given employment every person must be given a house not just life but respectable life it is an, it is an, these are all only directive principles every government union government as well the state government is obligated to bring them under legislation part 4 these directive principles are not enforceable they are not enforceable in a court but the political dialogue should be such to force the governments to enact laws in respect of everything for example right to education for no constitution in the world is this right to education for 8 years free compulsory education that is there in the, in the directive principle but you do implement it not no it is only in 2009 a law was made and we are implementing it so whatever is there in the socialist principle socialist agenda a part four of our constitution has got to be legislated same thing about panchayati raj it is not obligatory it is only when rajiv gandhi was the prime minister that panchayati raj was legislated and we have got the panchayati raj friends now you know under this government of india is feeding 80 crores of people 80 crores of people under the right to food security what is 80 crores two and a half times the population of the united states of america a number of countries put to that don't have this much population 10 items of food grains are given free to 80 crores of people and now this welfare is extended to such an extent everybody must be given a house to bhk in the in the uh, uh, telangana state and actually when i was in the government as advisor to chandra babu naidu i got statistics if you add all of that every family in andhra pradesh combined states of telangana and andhra must have had a 2 bhk house they have claimed that they have spent this much money i have been asking them to bring a white paper from 1956 onwards how many 2 bhk or whatever houses you have built if i added all of them when i was it advisor by now about to two crores of houses must have been built money spent money spent year after year two crores into four eight crores of people telangana's population is four crores andhra pradesh population is about five and a half crores everybody would have, should be living in a government house that shows the amount of corruption friends <coughs> then poverty it it will be why is it that india is still poor china until 1980s in per capita income in education in everything it was inferior to india until 1980s deng xiaoping came succeeding mao zedong and said that some people have to become rich 
before poverty can be eliminated. It is immaterial if the cat is red or white or black as long as it can catch the rat. So communism is not this, uh, capitalism is not the issue. Wealth must be created. Companies must come. If the state cannot create, the creative energies of the population must be unleashed. And what is it that we have? No, friends, we have been adding between 10 and 18 million people every year to in 1951, our population in the first census was 38 crores. What is the population now? 141 crores. We have beaten China. The most populous country in the world is now India and not China. And if you compare what is China's per, until 1985, its per capita income was less than that of India. Its education was less than that of India. If I give those figures, they will be very astounding, these figures are. Their, their poverty ratio is 0.5 percent. Our poverty ratio is 20 to 40 percent according to different estimates. But uh, it was, China was much, much, much poorer than India until the 1980s. The reason why I want to emphasize is, unless there is a national population policy, a poverty, 38 crores, where was it in 1951? And today it is 141 crores. Even if the fertility rate, total fertility TFR it is called, if 2.1 percent of the children born to a woman of childbearing age, the population does not increase. We have come to that. but. Certain sections of our population are al have always been having 50% more than the national average of the TFA. And therefore, there is a na terrible national imbalance in different sections of the population. Now, China in 1970s, it said only one child. And it is because of that they have been able to completely eliminate poverty, provide a job to everybody. By the year 2002, they said everyone must have two children. Compulsorily, each must have two children, otherwise they'll impose a penalty upon you. Because people are becoming older, they are not able to work. So we want to work like America. That's the national aim. So a population person. Now what are they saying? There must be three children. In China, there must be three children for every family. Otherwise, you won't get a job. And if you are in a job, you won't get money. Such penalties are imposed on that. So friends, yes, social security is not only for those who are partially or fully employed. We are talking about moonlighting. I know what all, what all is happening, why they are doing it. It is also greed. That is, there is sufficient for everybody's need, but not to meet everybody's, anybody's greed. That is the thing. Therefore, there must be atma control of wants. So friends, I will not take more of it, it is an unscheduled, but although I have informed that I would like to speak about this one. The problem of national, this social security is not only for those who are employed. It is not the problem of only Mr. Agarwal and other employers, but it is the problem of the whole of India and the new India. The problem is, if you can't control the population, we are doomed. And the population policy should be related to the aspiration of the nation and to the ability of the nation. In 1871, Bismarck, who united 28 different dukedoms and kingdoms in Germany, he started a welfare program for the nation. 1871. Now, the most welfare-oriented nations are the Nordic countries. Denmark, Finland, Sweden, these countries, 40% of your pay or your income is in tax. And from womb to tomb, womb to tomb they take care of. Any lady divorcing goes to the culture office, I want a house. They have to give a house. They can afford that one. Can we do that one? That is the question. Then why, how shall we tackle this problem? If you don't tackle now, the problem will become much more unsolvable. 
leading to social instability of just two minutes. I am finishing that one. <coughs> Therefore, our po we must insist upon the population policy in this country, national population policy, irrespective of the religion and the region. How can we enforce this? Because we have got a democracy. Nobody will vote. If you say uh, Andhra Pradesh is borrowing so much money, it is indebted so much, so our our state, so is the union government. Will they ever be able to pay back? Now the argument is, the argument is, if the nationalized banks can write off 10 lakhs of crores of rupees of swindled money by individuals, I am spending the money for the poor people. 80 percent of the families in Andhra Pradesh are getting 48,000 rupees per year into their bank accounts. 80 percent of the families. A BC woman at 45 is given a pension. Can we afford this? Chandra Babu started this business of Chandranna Pasupu Kumkumalu. 10,000 rupees just before I should do every woman of 80 lakhs. So, friends, for encroaching upon your time. <laughs>
friend of Sri Vishnu Rathas, younger shoulders, but he's telling you that the, the right will understand you perform the chair and have helped him own his administrative skills and equipment. He had also inherited the dynamism, diligence, stamina, and the perseverance of his grandfather. He believed that it is uh, his inactivity and not active activity that wears down the body and spirit. Now coming to his personal reasoning, Sri Vishnu Raju was born on 31st Jan 1964. At the age of four he went to the United Kingdom where his father was working as a doctor. He had his preliminary schooling in England. When he was six he returned to here to be brought up by his grandparents. He continued his schooling at Puti and then at New Delhi. He studied class 10 in little class school Hyderabad. Some of us must be sitting here so he be proud that he had an anime in And uh, he completed his graduate in chemical engineering at RIC, Trichy, uh, and his post graduation at Michigan uh, Tech University, USA. He is now the chairman and managing director of Anjani Motor Cement, chairman of Rasi Enterprises, director of uh, Venar Cinematics Limited. Sai Gandhi Foods and Retail Private Limited, um, Anjani Products, Construction Limited, and High Tech Green Systems Limited. He was greatly impressed by his grandfather from whom he had imbibed the quality of simplicity, hard work, willpower, patience, and kindness. Uh, Sri Kedi Vishnu Raju is a personification of humanity and affability. At the same time, he is tough taskmaster, expecting everyone to perform his or her potential. Again, while he is large hearted, always willing to invest whatever it takes for the holistic development of the students, especially the economically backward, he discourages wasteful explanation. Sri Devi Vishnu will carry the torch of vision of his grandfather. <coughs> Presently, he is working uh, incessantly and tirelessly towards the starting of his medical college, the upgradation of all the present colleges, and the setting up of research parks to encourage innovation and out of box thinking. And uh, lastly, I would like to say, uh, Ramchandra Gadu is really uh, lucky to have such a wonderful person to do the honors of reading the book. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have been heading this HR committee as uh, chair for the past six years or <coughs> now. And I run an industry called Pre-Tech Industries where we are the manufacturing navigation systems and test equipment from the sites like Brahmos, Aki, Pritina. So I started as one of the chairs for the industrial development committee and HR both together, but based on I prefer HR because I realized that you might be very good in everything, but if you are not capable of keeping the HR at the back of the mind, the company may not survive. And I change my words now, HR should be the friend now, not at the back of the mind. So, I the company should give importance to the HR first, then everything is taken care of. That's the need of the hour. And having taken this position, I was fortunate enough to have all the star, star words or the pillars of Hyderabad to be as my community members as a team. And only when I sit here, I say that I am HR, but otherwise I am a student. We learn from my community members who are all here. One of them is Ramsay Daroga, with everyone. Niran Dindar, Sonia, all of them I can't name. So, in FPCCI, they, with their help, we do so many events. Like, we have started, one of them is like HR Excellence Awards. See, it's an innovative thing which we started in FPCCI. The first year when we did, we had really to, I mean, we had to go to people to request them to apply and things like that. Second year was different, and third year we had the pride to sit comfortably on each award. We give about five, six awards in different categories, we had so many nominations. So the need of it, and FTCC is helping now the industry body or the commerce body or the trade body, we have recognized this committee has been recognized all over 3,000 members we have who have recognized us and it's really taking a shape now. And now there are so many people who have come for the first time, some of them. I request all of you to support us and do. In this process, as we were discussing, Dr. Daroga used to tell us three, four years onwards, we 
said, you have so much of fitness, knowledge, why don't we put it in a book? And that's how I think it has shaken shape. And he was kind enough to continue with the committee and the team and said, no, I would like to have the launch of the book at uh, Federation. And I have scanned through the book, not the printed version, not the complete version, the first take where it says, come here, given me for a take. I mean, for a couple of hours, we just scan through that. It really helps, as my president Anita has shared, uh, it really helps every director, every uh, person who runs the company. See, we depend on HR, but HR also feels, if I am the HR person writing the organization, I feel that the director should have this knowledge. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. So, this book, I request all the HR people to go and give it to your bosses or the company run by chairs or something and tell them that you take a quiz. Or uh, you will take an exam for them after me and ask them to go through this book. Apparently, any Ramana that you are giving it free to them? Thank you. So, uh, as our chairman has said, for the take off of the past four months here, and also for our chief guest, I we would like to present a small video of your KCCI and. Uh, which is a glimpse of what we are doing here for the last hundred and more years. Nineteen seventeen, the year when a dedicated organization, the Deccan Chamber of Commerce, was formed to encourage trade and commerce activities. The historical journey of the organization has witnessed great transformation as per the changing needs of the industry and businesses. The Federation of Telangana Chambers of Commerce and Industry FTCCI, a legacy of excellence, voice of the industry, representing interests of over 25,000 businesses of all sizes, sectors and regions is empowering industry and trade of Telangana state. A world leader in pharma, a global hub for vaccine, home to all major MNCs, leader in IT exports, an emerging first stop of India. FTCCI advocates a pro-business environment, caters to the needs of MSMEs, budding entrepreneurs and traders through its advisory services in taxation, market information, industry-related issues, B2B connection. The Chamber has its nominees in the state-level advisory committees to help drive business productivity. FTCCI aids in providing certificate of origin for exporters, issues visa recommendation for business travels. The Federation imparts job skills through its dedicated skill center. It has adopted 14 government ITIs to improve the employability of students. With a uniquely global perspective, the FTCCI events reach a highly engaged audience, policymakers, and stakeholders aiming towards Atma Nirbhar Bharat. FTCCI to work with government, tell us and guide us that we can do what we to remain competitive, to remain better than our competition. FTCCI for joining us and I thank the office bearers of FTCCI for inviting me. Jai Telangana, Jai Hind. Come and be a part of this dynamic and proactive organization. Together, let's realize the vision for a progressive future.
జేట్లి అది భక్తుడు మెరిపించి నాకు ఆర్గనైజేషన్ ఈ విభక్తి నాకు ఆర్గనైజేషన్ ఇన్ ఎ సీనియర్ పొజిషన్
Before writing the book, her last 
Samir, Eleanor, I have gone to, I have captured those gentlemen. Those gentlemen have been coming to that question. The gentlemen have been made among them. There were several conflicting statements. I find the letter by a hand to remove those conflicts and ensure that what material we are putting here is acceptable to the I think this is the, how I have come to the writing of the book. It is a great opportunity for me, all of you have seen it. But for you, I would not have written this. But for you, I get almost on every day minimum two counts, maximum five counts. Most of them I don't know, I cannot take it like This is a question to me, I ask. That is where it has come. And today, till a week ago, I was not interested to study new types of things, the Supreme Court agent. Most of you are not going to ask. <laughs> but some of my clients are putting out the force to make a DVD and then give a presentation. I have given to them, if you are going to invest money in this, you will buy your figure. <laughs> Don't do this. Because I remember in 1990, when this pension scheme had come in, it was affected by the union for almost after two years. After two years, the team has come. At that time, the government has given an insurance of the return of factor. That means, whatever money that you are investing today, you will get pension, like an entity, and the you, you will get return of factor. In 2008, with a notification, they have removed it. That means, your money, we have no room to ask, they can do anything there. Similarly, till one night 2014, the pension calculation is based on preceding five months average rate. Average rate multiplied by years of service divided by 7. On Monday 2014, they gave a notification where this month has been changed to 60 months. And it comes average of 60 months. The pension and agreement has come down for pension. Because some period you are paid on 6,500, some period you are paid on 5,000, some period you are paid on. But they have taken the average, they have not spoken to you, they have not given an opportunity to you. Then when there are uncertainties out there, why you should invest in the new pension scheme of the Supreme Court and other schools. Now, this DPT has gone across India now, and when it comes from Andhra, Mumbai, Delhi, but they will play it. Unfortunately, my mobile number is available to the DVD. I am getting cards from that. Therefore, I made an effort in this book to make it simple, easy, keep transfer. I know some managing director who got into the threat of an arrest by the PS department overnight. They have given tips because it's a money. That money is not connected to the employee account today. That will be put in the hand to get it credited to the employee. They have paid them to an after all. The day they gave and said that they will arrest the MD, we take That is the consequence. Therefore, this book should have been for confidence, understanding, and as a reference book. Thank you to everyone of you. Thanks a lot.
units which are applying more than 250 workers. That is the base for your thinking. Know that? Half if 516 out of 21,000. The remaining all are M, S, M, B, C. Frankly speaking, how many of us are including me? have gone through all the labor laws and the schemes or the rules or the case that has connected me to. Honestly, I not. Can anybody say that they have gone through all the labor laws and all the rules and regulations and started out it? <coughs> to my knowledge, no. We do get doubts. When, when we start writing, or when we start making the final statement, or when we start calculation of the grant treaty. Then no problem. I can tell you one question after the round of our question, the Raja Rock. Are still further required, and then we went to the government officer. So that we know how this means. That means we do need to have the clarity when it comes to us. But Suddenly you can't talk about it, now you have gone through. All the changes which are coming by way of case laws, none of us are going through and keeping it in mind. Because at one point of time, as they said, that duty, if you have to continue to be on the road, you have to wait that duty. No question of number of working days. Am I correct, sir? Never mind, brother. Subsequently, now that it has been changed, you have to work two party days. The other day, I was asking both of them. Sir, continuous service of five years, is it that one has to continue two forty days all through five years, then only you will get a liberty. Not five years they are completed, but not completed two forty days, is he eligible? A big doubt. Then again round the rock, or Niranjan Rao, both. Then they have given the clarification. That means we need to have the updated answers for questions. When this book has been written by Mr. Ramchandra Rao, I had the opportunity of going through initial draft. The draft also has given after getting puja done to me, just to go through it. I, first I was wondering why this kind of this thing, then the doubts which usually all people who are dealing with MSMEs particularly, they get the answer there and there itself. It is a kind of ready reckoner. Or the guide when we go by examination, just we go through it. When we prepare something, just we go through it. Then I thought it is highly appropriate, useful, and it will be definitely because then you have no way we have to do any jargon in the entire book, no way, not even a single act when you have answered the question, you have to do any jargon or get, will get any doubt when we go through that. That is the reason I thought it is really good for us and uh, uh, I have to thank Mr. Ramchandra now because you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, Mr. Rajgarh, Lan, 
ఇలాంటి వారి ఆధ్వర్యంలో ఆధ్వర్యం అంటే చీఫ్ గెస్ట్ అంటే నా దగ్గర ప్రకారం అది లేదంటే మీకు తెలిసిన ఎప్పుడు ఏ బస్సులో పొలిటికల్ గా వెళ్ళను జ్యుడిషియల్ గానే పెడతాను ఇప్పుడు మా స్టేట్మెంట్ చేసిన జయకృష్ణ గారు ఉన్నారు ఇక్కడ ఉన్నారు నమస్కారం సార్ మా జగత్య గారు మరోసారి పార్టీలో నేను అక్కడ ఈఎస్ఐ ఆఫీసు పెట్టడానికి సహకరించి దానికి ఒక షేప్ తీసుకొచ్చి ఆయన ఉన్నారు అయితే మేము ఎప్పుడు పొలిటికల్ గా వెళ్ళాము కానీ ఈ విధంగా ఏ రకమైన ప్రాబ్లం లేకపోయిన నాన్ కాన్ఫర్షియల్ గా ఈ బుక్ బుక్ అనేటప్పటికి అకాడమిక్స్ వచ్చేస్తుంది మనం అంతా ఇండస్ట్రీలో పనిచేస్తున్నా కానీ ఇండస్ట్రీ వస్తుంది ఆ రెండింటికి కంబైన్డ్ ఆయన ఆయన కరెక్ట్ గా చేసినందుకు చాలా చాలా బాగుందని అనుకుంటున్నాను అది స్టిల్ దట్ ఇస్ మై ఫార్ యూ ఇన్ టేకింగ్ హిస్ ప్రెసెన్స్ విత్ అస్ అండ్ టేకింగ్ హిస్ కన్సెంట్ హిస్ వెరీ అప్రోప్రియేట్ ఫర్ దిస్ ఇంకొక చిన్న విషయం మీకు చెప్తాను అంటే ఎక్కువ కొంత టైం ఎక్కువ ఇవ్వకూడదు అంటే ఆయన చెప్పేసాడు అని ఇప్పుడు ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ త్రీ ఇరవై ఇరవై మూడు నాకు తెలుస్తున్నంత మట్టుకి ఈ బుక్ రిలీజ్ ఎప్పుడు అవుతుందంటే రామచంద్రరావు గారి గోల్డెన్ జూబ్లీ ప్రొఫెషనల్ ఇయర్ అంటే ఆయన నైన్టీన్ సెవెంటీ త్రీ లో ఆయన ప్రొఫెషన్ స్టార్ట్ చేశారు ఇప్పుడు ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ త్రీ ఫిఫ్టీ ఇయర్స్ అయ్యింది గోల్డెన్ చేయించినందుకు చాలా సంతోషంగా నేను నేను తర్వాత ఇప్పుడు నేను ఇప్పుడు ఆయన ఇప్పుడు ఏమో ఒక నేను చాలా ఇప్పుడు తప్పకూడదు ఎందుకంటే మాకు చీఫ్ గెస్ట్ గారు మాట్లాడిన తర్వాత కానీ అంటే ఆ తర్వాత దాంట్లో పెట్టుకుంటాను థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ ఫర్ And they call it a hush trip actually. 
because all you need is a laptop and internet connection. Of course, there are other complications like taxation and things like that. I'm also very happy that I'm coming to this uh, hall after a very, very long time. The first time I came to this hall was about 40 years back when my grandfather, Dr. Bhushan Devi Rajgar, was actually honored here. And that time it was faxy. I was a student of Peter Media. <laughs> And then the last time I came here was I think on HEM, for the post of I was in board of my friend the Sri Kanta Peace Company. Extremely happy that I'm sitting between two neighbors whom I actually have met for the first time today. Um, Anil Ayurvati actually is my neighbor for one of our colleges. He's still actually just adjacent to our campus in Nasabur Mera District. And uh, Jaira Ular, of course, I know his son quite well. Only a long one was other ex or types of his uh, solar advice. So I'm very happy that I'm sitting between two neighbors who are meeting for the first time today. And uh, both of you, I don't know that incident, in fact, uh, to do valuation for cement, we are thinking of uh, AC sheets and uh, I remember meeting you a long time back. I think Piers as well and uh, Satish had actually called you. And thank you all for the kind words you mentioned. Uh, it's, uh, I think if you look at the topic today, and many of you probably are aware, in our country the first time this word social security was used was probably in the 1920s. And the first, why did all this come? Because it's the labor unrest in the industries. The first known labor unrest in India is, was in the Empress Mills in Nagpur in the 1870s. <coughs> I think the Tata took it over after that. That's when people started thinking about the workforce. That's when <coughs> It's basically the outcome of the industrial revolution. Uh, all these things which are talking about whether social security or provident fund. And I think there, I think the Tata were the pioneers. In fact, I think some of the things that Tata said, I think later on the government also adopted things like maternity leave and all that. So that should be a role model for us, and we should be proud that we are from a country where we did all this in the 1920s, and I think the social security system in the US was introduced by, I think, Franklin in 1935. So India had a head start. Yeah. The only point I'm trying to make here on this occasion is because I fortunately I'm also into running institutions, academics and the manufacturing side. I think the major thing is the word for empathy. All this comes out of empathy, what are they talking about? If it is if they think it's being forced on us, then none of these things will be successful. In fact, I was just reading on page 71, uh I'm sorry about this book. Whether uh, the actual needs are applicable to education institutions, I know it is there. But let me tell you in the state of Telangana, very few colleges are paying naturally in higher education. We are one of them who pays that. <laughs> Covid 2020, I think, hopefully the worst is behind us, but that's when the actual true colors came out. All this, what we are talking about, all these acts and all that. Tell us, tell me how many of us followed this. People were sad. There was no empathy, there was no sympathy for the people all these migrant workers, if you see. And uh, I think that was a real test. And uh, I'm also happy to tell you on this occasion, all the manufacturing companies, we run, they are basically in the field of ceramics. We, we have two type factories. We are into high uh, security variable data printing, into the food industry, and obviously uh, in education. Earlier I was in uh, cement, that's when I used to meet regularly because we had common problems. Very proud to tell you that Maybe under the training of SL Mujer or HR department, <coughs> not a single employee was removed, not a single employee's paycheck was cut, and we took care of them. <laughs> there was no law, there was no law to do. I think it all comes from the empathy, and this I brought it from my grandfather, the late Pramukh Bhushan I'll just give you a couple of examples of two of my role models uh, connected to today's topic. I did my engineering in RBC Chichi, now it's NID. And the legendary founder director of the model principles is a person called Professor Mani Unfortunately, passed away about seven eight years back. <coughs> All of us who studied in Chichi, RBC, they still talk about it. No one talks about the subsequent principles. And I attribute, attribute that to know that ragging was very prevalent those days. Terrible. Interest. I was physically ragged. Uh, so terrible. So almost for about seven, eight months the ragging took place and I think three months after I joined, one day I got sick of the ragging and I just packed my bag and went to Tishi town. Now this campus is about 60 kilometers away from Tishi, located between Tanjur and Tishi. 
happily I went there. I went into a small room. I started watching all Tamil movies there, having good vision and all that. Third day I come back to the campus, refreshed. And then suddenly the first person, the first student who sees me says, "I'm still alive. You thought you were killed. You thought you were murdered." What happened was the last my friend saw me was I was walking away to the back of the camp. Then all rumors started. That the seniors have taken him. They have finished him off. They threw him in the lake. So there was not to be seen. And there, those days there was no cell phone and all that. And here I am enjoying the town. So then they said uh, some attender came and said the principal is calling you. I said to me, he said he is doing my duty. And you know not very difficult to get people to when I went there, they were really scared. And Manish Sundaram was a very, very powerful person. He asked me what happened. Then I told him. Then he said, uh, who are your best friends? And he named two people. He pressed the bell and called the attender and said, call these two guys from the classes. I had actually bumped the college and ran away. I thought, why is he calling them? Then he said, uh, he made me sit down, he gave me a glass of water and said, uh, I know all of you go through all these mental trauma. Next time, at least tell someone before you run away. Running away is not an issue, but tell someone. So then we got into our sales. I had a motto, and there was a motto which was a temple. In Tamil, it was like, if you come and stay free, I'll go to Tamil and go to temple. I don't have time. So you take your friends and go to the temple and they go to the motto for time. So, in effect, he let others in class and also from the class and then he let me from the class. The second incident I talk about my grandfather, Dr. Diwal. He was probably the first fellow state person who set up a film factory in Jarana. Dr. Raghavan was set up a long time back and he was able to change hands. Parliament students also changed hands. And he actually set up this factory and tried to get the water from Jarana. In a place called Parvali in Almonic State. And I was doing my tent, coming in the middle, and the statue was taken there, so I used to let out me. So everywhere I go, factory construction was going on, but he was also building 100 houses in the village. And Parvali village is a very round, they come big, very small village, very backward. That's where the Musi and the Krishna they meet. And there are some two very famous temples there. So I was asking him, Dr. Ayatikar, what are you doing in the village? And he said, I am building 100 houses here. So before the factory was inaugurated, he actually bought these 100 houses built. But what he said is, see, we are building a certain factory here. Obviously, we can't provide jobs for everyone. And we will provide jobs only for few. So the rest of the people will have hard work. Seven factory produces dust. It created a lot of pollution. Because those days the pollution control norms were not as stringent as today. So we need to keep everyone with us, irrespective of caste, community, political affiliation. So he made a survey apparently and found out across all the communities people who did not have houses. And he actually bought land in the village and built 100 houses. Now, of course, obviously, many of you know that there is a massive takeover took place in 1998. But uh, just across the river, the so river Krishna separates Mutu district and Nagona district. He was also instrumental in getting the bridge built, contributed about 65 lakhs for that bridge, which many of you would have crossed by going to Mutu. RDC games are being in Mamo. Across the bridge was Andhra Cement. Andhra Cement actually technically was a much superior plant. They had excellent lines on mines. And when I came back from the US, long time after that, and I was Looking at that plant. From this plant, I could see the chimney on that plant. I never saw smoke coming out. Because those days, the day that we go to the cement factory, the only way we have to smoke comes from the chimney. Where smoke comes, you can arrest it. So I used to ask what happened. So there were 26 unions there. There were next sites in that factory. The factory was actually burned when Ramda was murdered in Dijawar. In fact, we never ran it, exchanged four hands. I think it also is one of the factory. Because this plant, which was technically not as good as that plant to stop in terms of control systems and lines on mines, just never stopped even for a minute. And I think that was a good CSR, and then when CSR was not even a word, 
So, for example, inspiration I came from these two people is when I was running Ajani Sinas again in Malmoda district before a sick company. He was sitting in Malmoda for almost eight years. People went saw it and said it won't happen. We went to over the plant. The technical problem was between the lights on lights in the factory, there was no village. And in Andhra and Karamana, all the civil factories are literally located on the lights on lights. <coughs> because if you are located far away, for every ton of cement you have to transport one and a half tons of lights on. So it's a very near cost. You have a cost disadvantage. Of course, I think the uh, Orient cement has got a low pay, if I'm not mistaken. Orient, okay, so I'm, I'm not sure. But the rest of the factories in Nagorno and Andhra are all located on the deposit. For some reason, this factory was built very close to the that project. The limestone was located 20 kilometers away. Maybe that's why you bought the plant. So I went ahead and bought it. And that village was very troublesome. Constantly, people were fighting every two, three months. There were murders there, families. <coughs> so, I want to learn from my grandfather is how to keep them surrounding communities happy. So, typically, all the factories build a school because it's all about housing problems in all remote areas. The school will always be built inside the factory, inside the colony. What we did is we built it outside the factory, we built it in the villages. Because we did a project manager of Mandal of that particular district. There was no English medium school. People either had to go to Jagannath Krishna district across to Andhra or to Old Bolai. So we bought a flag three times the price, what was the prevalent day because it's a very nice location. Built a school. A lot of people criticized me, saying that it's a sick factory. You still have to turn it around. You have to make money, then you build a school. I said, no, this is what I learned from my grandfather, so we built that school. What happened was, every time limestone trucks come from the village here, even if a small stone falls down, people were looking at, uh, uh, as an excuse to stop the, back, stop the limestone coming and demand money here. Over a period of time, what happened was because of the school, the children were so happy because it was all subsidized. And one time, when one, it was between two political parties, and we were uh, the boxing back for the political parties. One time, what happened was when they saw the truck, I just called up my plant in charge and said, write a letter to the DO Namunda saying that we want to stop the school and we want to surrender the school license. Now, this robot went into the village. By evening, four truckloads of four cheap loads of people came and they said, double attend it. My children are coming and doing dharma saying if you give the school closest, you will not study. Now, the idea is now, even though the management has changed, the school is protecting that passion. So, they have a very troublesome situation. So, I just thought I would share some of these experiences with you. And uh, uh, once again, I am very grateful that Ramchandra uh, uh, will talk about me. Uh, one suggestion Ramchandra is a fantastic book. Probably if you can really translate it into Telugu, Hindi, and other languages. Because quite a few people uh, in the smaller industries where the head is. And you are right, the Hindi, the directors can be arrested. And uh, I have known some people who are in that stage also. So it would be very nice if this can be translated into the regional languages, maybe in a startup with Telugu or Hindi or Tamil or something like that. Because definitely the people working in the smaller plants, I think they need to know all this. It's a very relevant here. And, uh, I congratulate you and your daughter, and beautiful design looks very appealing. And uh, thank you all for inviting me and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, a few organizations and a uh, few people want to visit it from the other on this great occasion of reading in the book. Uh, if we uh, can motivate it.